Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. It's interesting that this passage of Scripture invites us to defend our hope. As if there's a lot of need to do that. The Scripture makes us think that there are people who are going to constantly be coming up to us saying, Why are you hopeful? (laughs) And that we're going to have to, on the spot, defend it as if we're on some sort of court TV show. I mean, maybe that happens. Maybe there are times when we have to do that, need to do that. But times change. And I wonder if maybe this is pointing more at the idea of not necessarily defending it, but explaining it. How can you be hopeful right now? What gives you hope? When asked those kinds of questions, our answer can't just be, I don't know, the pastor told me to be hopeful. It can't can't just be because Jesus loves me. True, but there's more to it than that. Why are we hopeful? Why do we go into the, the garden of tombs like the women who went to anoint Jesus' body and remain hopeful that the stone will be rolled away. How in the face of all that is evil can we remain hopeful? Now, admittedly, there are times when I don't know the answer to that question. And at times, I'm not entirely sure I can explain my hope. But we have to try. We have to discover that hope within us. That hope that tells us that despite all that the world says, we are still held in God's hands. Despite all that seems to be going wrong, there is still good. The hope that we have is not in the world. It's in God. And so, when someone asks you to explain your hope, perhaps that can be our answer. I have hope because I don't place my hope in the world. I don't place my hope in our leaders. I don't place my hope in the institutions. I place my hope in God. And God will never disappoint. Amen. 